What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show and today we have something fun. It's just a nice easy vlog because I'm very excited. This right here is the CBR 600 F4i and it is fully road legal and finally ready to go tear up some twisties and maybe even ready for a racetrack. But today we're just gonna go have some fun do my first ride on this thing because I actually haven't put down that many miles. The most mileage I've done is actually just coming out here to film the video. So there's a lot to talk about with this thing and uh, let's, just, let's just go out and have some fun. This is just, today it's just about goofing around. Alrighty folks, <laughs> it is time. It is time to go break some rules on the F4i. <laughs> if ever there was a motorcycle that was most likely to get me arrested, it was probably gonna be this one. Not only because it looks like an absolute squid bike, but it rides just like any other 600 I've ever ridden. So what I wanted to go over real quick is just some of the stuff that I had to do to this thing before I finished getting it road legal because Unfortunately, the last garage video, it just didn't do super well. So first things first is we've got new blinkers on here. These are actually running lights, which is nice because TST Industries has a little splitter that'll turn a two wire into a running light. So you can see it blink in there. Um, then I have uh, back here, these sequential blinkers, which are pretty slick. Let me turn them on. These are like $10 on Amazon, which was nice. Then, uh, the biggest thing I had to do was actually completely rebuild the rear brake master cylinder. So this thing was not moving whatsoever. It would go to about there and then stop because the master cylinder had been sitting with bad fluid in it for so long that it got completely crunchy and crusty and it basically locked in place. So I had to completely disassemble that blow a ton of brake cleaner and air through it, got it super shiny clean, put new seals, rebuilt the whole damn thing. Then because the grips were all mangy, I got some new grips on here. Uh, these are just cheapo nibbies that I got from Amazon. I do need to replace the throttle tube on here though because the throttle tube is too short for the pegs and I just didn't want the grip looking funny so I cut it short. And then of course, because it wouldn't be a proper squid bike without the squiddiest of squid mirrors, I have these guys on here. These are the squiddiest mirrors humanly possible. You cannot find squiddier mirrors because they look like the Rizoma folding like wing mirrors, but they're $30 on Amazon. So uh, I think that this is the ultimate squid machine right now and we're gonna go ride it and evaluate it as such. So. Let's hit the road, but before we do, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Flyin' Eyes. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet for you. Flyin' Eyes makes the most comfortable sunglasses for your ride thanks to their flexible yet tough frames. They've got a bunch of different styles of frames and lenses to pick from, and to make that job easier, they have their try-on kit. Pick four of your favorite frames and try them out for a week. When that week is up, send it back and pick out your favorite. The $40 that you spent on the kit will get credited to your order. And on top of that, you can use the code SC10 for 10% off your order. There's never been a better time to try out Flying Eyes. Link is down in the description below and let's hit the road. Now you may notice this uh, fancy Dashamahoozit that I've got right here. This is the Chi-G AI-05. I'm actually in the middle of filming and editing a video about this guy. Uh, I'm kind of evaluating it as we rode. I figured since I have a bike in pieces, let's just throw the AI-05 on here. And I'm super glad that I did because this is really, really cool. If you want more information on this, there's a video coming uh, on Saturday. No, Sunday, I believe. So right around the corner for the Chi-G AI-05. But that is not the purpose of today's video. The purpose of today's video is to be a squid. So let's go squidding. 
Now, for those of you who uh, were perhaps unaware of the lineage of this motorcycle, um, I wouldn't blame you because there's a lot of 600s that happened in the early 2000s that uh, it kind of became hard to track. So this motorcycle right here is the last year that they made the CBR F4i. They switched over to just having the double R in 2007. So the 2006 is the last year you can find one of these, which is kind of cool, actually. This bike is packing a 599cc inline four that puts down 110 horse at 12,500 RPM. <laughs> so anybody out there who is like, yeah, this is, this is a more relaxed 600 is just wrong. <laughs> They're just wrong. They're like, yeah, it's got four more uh, foot pounds of torque and it's a little earlier on yeah that that 48 foot pounds of torque that comes in at 10,500 rpm and uh, a lot of reviewers are like oh it's 7,000 7,000 to 8,000 rpm that's really when it starts to wake up yeah kinda <laughs> kinda it wakes up there it really doesn't wake up till you get to 10,000 RPM. It's just nobody's home. <laughs> it's really, really funny that a lot of people are like, oh, it's this sport touring capable 600. The hell are you smoking? Sure, my handlebars are a little bit higher, but that's it. That's, as far as I can tell, that's the only uh, real concession made to streetability on this motorcycle. Everything else is, it's stock standard 600 stuff, man. And I think that's probably why Honda ended up moving away from this motorcycle because people were realizing that there's such a, such a teeny tiny little difference between this motorcycle and a uh, CBR 600 double R that they were like, what's the point? Everybody who's gonna get this is just gonna get the double R. Nobody's buying these, and we're not selling them to the people we thought we were. They're just selling them to squids who couldn't find the double R. I also have been hearing a lot of people say that this is like the perfect stunt bike. What? <laughs> How? Like, yeah, okay, it's got a little bit more torque, but why not just get a 636? Get it, get it just absolutely clapped out 636 and stunt that thing out. It's got way more torque in the mid-range than this thing does. Now, a lot of that sounds like I'm just absolutely ragging on this motorcycle and I don't like it. And that's partially true and it's partially not. Uh, I actually, I really do enjoy this motorcycle. I'm not selling it. I'm going to be keeping it. I've got a whole bunch of projects lined up for it because my whole purpose with this is to basically rent it out and use it as a track bike. <laughs> this is 100% just going to be a, you know, it's, it's a sport bike weekend toy and that's all that a 600 on the street really is. But again, I, I, I don't dislike this bike. Every single corner I go through, I'm just having so much fun. And that's really what I wanted to talk about in this video, is just how good super sports are. And how just, they're, they're these telepathic machines that just want to do one thing and it's disgusting. So, in that vein, let's pick up the pace a little bit and talk about the power on this. So. I had said there's not much mid-range and it starts to wake up around 10,000 RPM. Yep. You really gotta keep this thing singing, which means, you know, you could be between seven and 10 or seven and 12, but it really feels the best between, I'd say nine and 13 is really where it's happiest. But at that point, you're just, it's screaming. So for the sake of the video, I'm not, I'm not keeping it there. I also tend to have a little bit of mechanical sympathy for my motorcycles, uh, and I don't like keeping them on the boil, but it's built to do it. So I'm not super worried about that. 
in this case. And when you get it on the boil, it delivers a solid amount of power. Is it the fastest thing in the whole wide world? No, it's just not. The nice thing is that paired with that speed is a great set of brakes. You know, I know these are old school Nissans on here uh, and it's rubber lines and stuff, but for the street, totally adequate. Me personally, I think that to get the best feel out of this, what I'd really want to do is put a set of uh, braided steel lines on there. And I actually already have some in the garage, so stay tuned. And then it's really hard for me to evaluate the master cylinder on this because this has these trashy Amazon levers on here. And I get it, they're blue and the bike was blue. Don't buy the shitty Amazon levers, guys. I know they're $20 and they look neat, but you, they, they just do not feel as good as your stock levers. They never ever will. Now my absolute favorite thing on this motorcycle has to be the handling. The handling, so the suspension right now, I can tell it is not properly set up. It's just, it's a little wallowy. Um, it squats funny. It feels like the front end dives a lot more than it should. Uh, I'm gonna take it to my local suspension guy, Roger, at On Road Off Road. If you're in Austin, he will set your bike up for $50 cashy money, or 60 if you use a cash app or something like that. Um, and he keeps track of all of your bikes, uh, figures and stuff, and he throws it into these big spreadsheets so that he can, you know, further analyze and get you the exact setup that you need. Uh, it'll, it'll really, really make a difference on braking and on accelerating. But around a corner, this thing is so unbelievably stable, which is so awesome. It's, I think the best thing about these 600 Super Sports is just how stable they are. I feel absolutely laser accurate on this. Exact, where I tell this bike to go is exactly where it goes. And side to side through that little chicane, Oh, it's like nothing. It's nothing for this bike. And whoop! <laughs> the, the direction change is so smooth. And the handling is so confidence inspiring. It just, it just wants to be ridden so fast. <laughs> it wants to be ridden so fast. And then there's just me poodling around out of the power band at like 6,000 RPM, you know? It just feels silly having this thing out here. And I think that's one of the things that I dislike about 600s is just they're, they're useless. <laughs> they're useless motorcycles. Unless you're riding this thing on its terms, it just feels wrong <laughs> it just feels wrong all it wants to do is tear up a twisty road yeah I'll actually scratch that all it wants to do is tear up a racetrack that's all it wants to do in life and by doing this it's like why am i here and the soundtrack is just so classic japan super sport man when so many people think of motorcycling, this is the sound they hear in their brain. You know, it's either this sound or the Harley V-Twin. And you, you just, you understand why so many bikes have this in it. Oh. It just sucks that the power is so high in the power band. I, I just can't play with it. And that's why I say, if ever a motorcycle is going to get me arrested, it's this one. Because I'm the kind of moron who's like, yeah, I'll just go a little bit faster and I'll experience the power. Then suddenly I start going down these twisty roads at like 60 mile an hour. And that's not, uh, not entirely within the bounds of civilized society, shall we say. But it's fun! It's just so much fun! You just feel the lineage of 
decades and decades of advancement in racing technology in this. It's so cool. It's so cool. And I think one of the things that's super awesome about these older 600s is they just have the giant tachometer in the middle of the dash. Now, admittedly, I don't get to look at it all that often because, you know, I'm looking where I'm going and it's way down below my field of view. But like if you tuck in, it's right there, big and beautiful right in your face. This bike is just, it's so much fun, but it's so stupid at the same time. Um, <laughs> I won't be, I can tell you right now, I personally will not be riding this motorcycle that often. Uh, I'll take it out for videos every now and again, but on my own time, would I ride this? No, because I have the Hornet. Me personally, I would rather be on the back of the Hornet than on this thing, because the Hornet's just more comfortable it's got more torque. Um, there's just something special about that particular motorcycle, despite making very similar power figures. I also, I just, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> you know, I just, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to stay free for a little while. But it's so much fun. And this season, uh, when track days start opening up again, I'm going to be taking this to as many track days as humanly possible because I, I just want to see what this bike is capable of and what I'm capable of. How much I can learn and how good I can get in a you know summer of riding this thing around a racetrack. So guys, here at the end of Lime Creek, let me know what your thoughts are on 600s as the average street bike. Do you think they're silly? Do you think they're fun? Do you own a 600 for the street? Uh, do you take it on the track? Because I actually had a buddy. This is very true. He put 27,000 miles on an R6 and not one of those miles was on a racetrack. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And uh, if you wanna see more with this bike, I am gonna be working on projects like upgrading the suspension, upgrading the brakes, replacing the clutch. A lot of stuff is gonna happen to this particular motorcycle. So stay tuned for that. And I would like to point out, while I didn't post a lot of the uh, tinkering that went on with this bike on YouTube, it did end up in the Discord. So if you'd like to see all of that, click the link down in the description below and go to the Patreon where you can support the channel directly and get access to all of that good stuff. And the super secret special new uh, bike that I'm working on, which is just, oh my God, when it's running, it's going to be so good. I'll tell you right now, when it was new, it made 140 horsepower. So there you go. While you're down there, check out Flying Eyes. Remember, SC10 gets you 10% off your order, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.